Hey, I'm Andy. And I'm Ayla. And welcome to Sinister, Sinister Dynasty. Dynasty. We are going to be talking about the... Um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong one way or another, so just... I understand that, and I googled, and I tried to find out how to properly say it, but it was wrong. <laughs> so, just bear with me. So, we're going to be talking about the Lanoch Road murder. Murders. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, murders. <laughs> murders. And I bring you mur. Dean Wade Fuller Sandys. Mouthful. It was a 21-year-old tire fitter. His uh, he left his parents' home at Blockhouse Bay in his orange Hillman Avenger to go fishing and never returned. It was believed he was drowned while fishing at West Auckland's... Uh, West, a West Auckland beach. So they never found him. His car had been left parked at the beach, but no, his body was never found. Well, that was a great way to start the podcast, wasn't it? No backstory, just death <laughs> you ready 26th of august five days after dean had gone missing yeah. leah romney stevens who was a 20 year old sex worker also went missing oh. three years later in june 1992 her skeletal remains were found in a forest near the murawai golf course so that's just two deaths no, within, straight out of the blue yep well five days in bet- yep wow and how far would we're not two even minutes in. not even three minutes in, and two people have died. Jeez. Right. So no arrests were made in either case at the time. Okay. Okay. Police received a tip off years later that the two deaths were related. Dean's missing person report was then upgraded to a homicide inquiry. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, Gail Manny, who was a young mother, and Tania Wilson were living at 22 Larnich Road. Both were working as prostitutes. Um, I reference that because that's going to come back in later, but no hate for them. They're putting food on the table, they're living yeah. their lives. So. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yep. Yeah. So, Manny was in a relationship at the time with Stephen Stone, who was working as a strip club bouncer and an active member of a gang. Nice. <laughs> Not so much, but no. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay, so while the tenants and the tenants who lived at Larnich Road were at a party, their home was robbed. Manny thought it was Dean. She thought he. Oh, so this is so Dean was dead, and this was before Dean died. This was before Dean died. Okay, Sorry, I, I should have elaborated. Okay. Yeah. So this is going back to what happened. Yeah. What they think happened. Yeah. Okay, so Manny thought this was Dean. She thought he'd done this as, at the time, he was said to have attended parties at the address and sold drugs to her. Drugs. Uh, Manny confronted Dean several days later at the Westwood Hotel. Tavern. Manny was described as aggro. Dean denied ever being there to rob the place. Other people who witnessed the argument have said that they believed he was telling the truth, but Manny continued to accuse him. And Manny's the gang person, eh? the no, bouncer? No, no. Manny oh. is the young mother. Oh, okay. okay. Who's in the relationship with Stephen Stone, who who's is the gang person. Okay. Gotcha. Bouncer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I've had to call her Manny, though. I should have called her Gail through this, but oh well. I yeah. can't change it now, otherwise I'm going to get screwed up. Yeah. Uh, a witness claimed that she heard... Manny asked Stone to do a hit on Dean, but Stone said no. She pushed further, and then Stone agreed. Right, so she, so he said no originally. Yeah. So this dude had some morals, and the girlfriend's like, nah, you do what I say, <laughs> and did that. And not in those exact <laughs> words, but... Ooh. Word for word quotation. No, kidding. Um, That's just like... But much. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, a woman who was having a casual sexual relationship with Dean at the time was told by Nat- Manny to invite him over to the Atlantic Road home mm-hmm. on his while he was on his way fishing. Like, so he was toddling off to go fishing yep. and then had a pit stop on the way. To party. <laughs> Pick up the beers for the fishing. There casual sexual relationship. I don't think he would have been there. 
yeah. to pick up beers. <laughs> oh, kidding. I thought you meant... No, okay. That, that made more sense in my head. <laughs> Anywho. So when Dean arrived, he was confronted by Stone, Manny and eight other people. Stone had an argument with Dean, then beat him to the ground. Manny kicked Dean several times and Stone pulled a handgun. Ooh. He shot him. He shot him. Sorry, yeah, he shot very him. blunt. <laughs> he shot him. The end. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's what happened. Um, so this most likely killed him, though. Well, as you would expect. <laughs> yeah. So Stone ordered the four men who were there to take the gun and also shoot Dean. To implicate them as well. Two women loaded the body into the car and five men drove the five men drove into Woodhill Forested area and buried the body. It was it was later arranged that Stone ordered Colin Manny, who is Gail's little brother, and Mike Kendrickson to drive Dean's car to the beach where he was going fishing. Ah. And because other people thought he was going fishing as well, so it just made sense to drive the car down. Okay. Yeah. 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 So Leah presented Oh So Leah's the the one that died five days well that went missing yeah. five days later. Yeah. So okay. Leah was present when Dean was murdered. So she was oh. there. Oh, okay. After this she became nervous and started talking. Five days later, Stone and two other picked her up the other people picked her up off Queen Street where she was working with another woman. So she was Yeah. Yeah. Before she left they had agreed to meet after work at a Ford Street nightclub. Stone warned Leah about knocking and took her back to the Larnack Road home where he punched her in the head. Ooh. Trigger warning. Um, this is sexual, sexual assault. Mm. So if you want to skip forward just a few seconds, please do. However, um, he punched her in the head and ordered another man to rape her. Oh. He then raped her and stabbed her in the stomach. As mm. she lay there moaning, he pulled her head back and slit her throat. Jeez. Her body was taken to the Waitakere Ranges by three men and buried. The woman who was working with Leah became concerned when she didn't show that night and a few days later reported her missing to the police. Okay. That's pretty dark. That's very dark. Just wait. It's, it gets mental in a minute. Jeez. After two years of investigating, Gail Manny was convicted. 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 My bad. <laughs> I'm reading faster than I'm speaking. <clears throat> okay, hold on. After two years of investigation, Gail Manny was convicted of convic- com- <laughs> 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 out. convicted of commissioning Stephen Stone to kill Dean over what looked to be a drug-related dispute. Stone was also charged with the rape and murder of Leah. So he wasn't charged with Dean's death, but he was. He was. Charged. Okay. He was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he was charged for the murder and the rape. Yeah. So the murder, the murders are said to have taken place at Gail's Manny's address of 22 Lana Road. Yeah. That's where they get the name from, in yeah. the garage. Two other men were also convicted of being accessories to the murder of Dean by s- disposing of the body. So that was Colin Manny and Hendrickson. Yeah. The decade-long gap between the crime and conviction has caused a lot of struggle with this case. This was due to the lack of forensic evidence, no murder weapon, no body, and the legal immunity that was granted at the time. So all what of these... was the immunity granted for? The person who came forward, I'm guessing. To... Hold on, we'll get there soon. Okay. Hold on, hold on. So this made it a very questionable case. Gail Manny continues to state she is innocent and she never met Dean. And the first time she heard his name was the 3rd of July, 1997, when she was charged for the murder. The key witnesses who have testified that Manny had done this recanted their statements. Stone is also very clear and ad- adamant that he did not kill them either. Hmm. So, um, just a few concerns in the case. So, lack of forensic evidence. Dean's body has never been found. No DNA, no blood matches, no weapons. Between two witnesses, there are 15 to 20 different versions of event on what happened. Mm. So some of these versions are, so Leah was killed from skimming drugs. Two, she was killed out of fear she would narc. Then her clothes were tucked into a bush when she was buried. 
and another one was her clothes were burned and then the location of the clothes being burned changed from Massey to Kingsland Kingsland and then when disposing of Dean's car they dropped it off to the beach returned to the Larnack Road then became concerned about fingerprints drove back to the beach picked up the car returned to Larnack Road cleaned the car then dropped dropped it back off the beach that is an hour each way yeah and then in the next with the petrol prices though maybe they were more reasonable than today's that's like so <laughs> that's six hours like six hours though i mean they have committed a murder so okay <laughs> and then the other person had no record of the travel so that didn't happen mm. um so the verdict two days of deliberation the jury found manny and stone guilty Stone was also found guilty of the rape and murder of Leah. Manny and Stone received life in prison. Stone received an additional 10-year sentence for Leah. So Colin and Hendrickson were found guilty of accessory to murder for helping dispose of the body. Mark received three years and Colin received a two-year suspended sentence. What is a suspended sentence? Parole. I had to Google that. Yeah. (laughs) So Mark Hendrickson denied knowing Dean and denied knowing two of the four key witnesses that the Crown had. Right. And he barely knew the third one. He was willing to take a polygraph and hypnosis to prove his innocence. Manny and Hendrickson appealed their convictions on the fact that the judge had not properly summed up their case to the defence. Both were found guilty again in trial in 2000. In 2005, Gail Manny filed another appeal on the base that the other key witness had recanted their testimony that implicated her. Mm-hmm. The appeal was rejected mm. on the base that the jury did not believe the witness when she gave new evidence. They rejected it as a lack of credibility on all relevant matters. So, Eva, so... They didn't believe her anyway when they first said... And so Manny no. was put in prison for other reasons. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. No, Manny was put into prison because of the the other original stuff. testimony. Yeah. And then they said that, they, oh, that testimony didn't actually happen. This is what happened. And they said, no, that original testimony was the one that happened. Oh. Okay, Manny was paroled in 2010, but recalled two times due to breaches of parole. She went out on in 2010 recalled in 2012 she went out again on parole in 2016 and recalled in 2017 for a short time in 2019 when she failed to turn up for a drug uh, for a short time okay full stop in 2019 she failed to turn up for a drug test she had a drug test a few months later and her urine was diluted the following month, she tested positive for meth, and she served a total of 15 years and will remain on parole for the rest of her life. So she was, she was in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah. Okay, so the police investigation. The Crown's case against Gail is based fully on witness testimonies. The witnesses that did testify were interviewed eight or more years after the disappearances of Dean and Leah, and several of the testimonies were recanted. Mm. Two men who did testify and said that they were present at the time of the killing and admitted they did dispose of Leah's body at Murawai were granted name suppression and immunity from prosecution. Wait, what? So they admitted to it and then were granted immunity despite innocent no they would have they would have negotiated that immunity and then said whatever they said and so the other people were still in prison at this time oh no they had, their sentences had been finished by now no gail, gail is out um stone is still in prison right yeah. uh, a key witness who has permanent name suppression claims he was among the eight that were there when dean was murdered and disposed of as well as being there when leah was raped and killed mm. uh, he received full immunity from prosecution 30,000 and a new identity under witness protection he received $30,000 for yep. 
seeing two people be killed in one... <laughs> no, he... I believe he received $30,000 for a statement for loss of wages as he was overseas or something like that. Jeez. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Sorry. At the time of the interview, uh, they... He had no knowledge of either crimes. He only remembered when he was under hypnosis. He says he swore black and blue that I had no knowledge of it until basically my mind got to a point, snapped, and went back to that time and place. Mm. So he had no knowledge of either of the murders. Until he remembered them. Until he was put under hypnosis. Mm. Um, so that is strange. Um, so there are four Crown witnesses that have immunity from prosecution in this case. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. So the Leah, the Leah, the woman Leah was working with the night of the 26th of the 8th was cross-examined. She was informed that the, she informed the court of Leah's recent relationships, saying that um, Leah had been in trouble due to jealousies and had been smacked around about a week before she disappeared. No. The woman also disclosed that Leah used to trail bike ride with one of the key witnesses through the Wood Hill Forest, and they had been given immunity. She also denied knowing Stone, Manny, or Hendrickson. So this lady doesn't know any of them. But said the Crown witness was sneaky and could not be trusted. Hmm. While in trial, Mark Franklin, the lead investigator was challenged by the defence on if he had bullied witnesses or pressured them into changing their stories to match a predetermined police narrative. He denied these allegations. Two other key witnesses recanted their statements say, uh, that said that they were present at the time of the killing. So now they're not, they weren't there. Yeah. February 2005, court appealed. One of the witnesses admitted that they gave a false statement to police. When a witness was being cross-examined, she said she had told many lies when interviewed in 1997. She had made eight statements and had not initially mentioned about the hit, she, the hit on Dean. Yeah. She had also said that Stone had taken Dean into the woods and shot him twice due to a bad drug deal. Okay, Stephen Kyle Colley also had been investigated in regards to Leah's disappearance don't know who that man is but okay. he was he was also investigated <laughs> yeah which i think is important but <laughs> so manny is now going to be represent, uh, represented by three prominent lawyers whose names i didn't write down because i don't know why um manny continues to stand with the fact that she did not commit these murders and the lawyers who we don't know the names of as i'm not in the mood to google them are going to represent her so there's three, three very prominent lawyers, which you can Google, are going to represent her to clear her name. Stone, who is still in prison, did admit to killing Dean in a restorative justice meeting with Dean's family in 2010. He did this as he was going for parole and was told it would look good. No. He recanted his confession and went back to his original claim of innocent when he didn't get parole. He was again denied parole in 2017 and was up again in 2019, but this was denied as he is still in prison. So in 2018, Radio NZ and Stuff released a podcast documentary about the case called Gone Fishing, where they interview many and some other key witnesses and Mark Franklin, the former detective. So if you want more information, go listen to this. Well, I didn't listen to it because I didn't want it to change the way I thought my case was going to be recorded. <clears throat> July 2019, another key witness who gave evidence in the trial that found Manny guilty said she also lied to police about being at the killing also. She said she'd lied at the, as the police had been threatening and harassing her. She said she had only done this as the police... Okay, I'm going to interrupt because I... I'm lost. Yeah, so they've... So Manny and... St 
Stone or whatever his last name is, the, the gang dude, and they were in prison, and then by now, like, when actually, it's kind of been pinned on them. It's been pinned on them, yeah. yeah. And other people who have been, have said that they were there and saw the murders have been granted immunity and got paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Not all of them have, though. So these two women um, lied because the police have threatened to take away their children from them. Right. Yeah. And this has been recanted by, um, has been confirmed by another policeman. That they were going to take their children away? No, so what he said was, Andrew Thompson said he, when he picks one of the women up after the interview to take her home, he confirmed that the lady said that her and the other woman had lied to the police. Right. Uh, so, um, Tim McKinnell who is a private investigator who is working to clear Gail's name, said that the information that Andrew Thompson gave wound up with other information that he had. So the lead investigator, Mark Franklin, sold weed to an undercover cop in the Cook Islands in 2010 and was put into prison Uh-oh. for 12 months. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> Sorry. So he can... <laughs> He confirmed that he was using weed at the time of the case to cope with stress, but he was adamant that he kept this out of work time. So, at this point in time, Manny and Stone are um, fighting to clear their names Mm -hmm. as they are saying they've never met Dean, Mm -hmm. which, fair enough. Mm -hmm. So, since being in prison, Manny has gained a degree in psychology mm-hmm. and she has written to criminologist Greg Newblood for support. Mm. So Gary, this this is a wee bit out the gate and this pissed me off so much. So Gary Stone, who is, Stone's fa- who is Stephen Stone's father, the gang member, um, has come forward for the Gone Fishing interview and he says... Stone has no reason to rape a woman. They all flock after him anyhow. <laughs> I don't know what kind of tone he said that in, but I'm sure it... it, <laughs> it, it yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, Stone has previous charges from 2005 where he struck a man with an iron bar. He got five years for aggravated robbery. His conviction started from when he was 14 and has about 17. He's described as easy to get along with, but born thug. He is a, currently a crane operator in prison. So he has lodged an appeal on August 10th to 2020. I have oh. no clue what the outcome is. That was quite recent as well, 2020. Yeah. Um, I've got another two theories, though. Um, so, so that first theory was that it's literally been pinned on them. Yeah. And... Other people who were there got paid. I st- I can't get over that. <laughs> How ridiculous! Uh, one oh, of them. One of them. he has got no paid. reason to sexually assault someone because he's attractive. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Because that's how it works. Yeah. Oh, my logic. Fucking God. Good logic. People, I tell you. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, sarcasm. <laughs> so, yes. Heavy sarcasm. Yeah. I mean, oh my God. Anyway, a theory. So one of Dean's friends came forward saying that he could have committed suicide as he'd just broken up with his girlfriend. And he was having a casual sex partner as well. But that's that's potentially all made up. Ah. Uh-huh. Oh, true, because it's pinned. Sorry, yeah. I've been, so predetermined been police narrative, question mark. Yeah. And another theory was he was washed off the rocks while fishing. That's I mean, a pretty that, sad way to go. That yeah. could have happened. I yeah. mean, he was doing what he loved. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, that, so that could have happened. However, if this did happen, and... Wait, so what happened to Leah then? What was the... So if he did commit suicide, if he did unalive himself... That's or, what I was getting to. Okay, <laughs> yeah. What's, what's Leah's theory? What so, was that theory? 
So the only theory with Leah is that um, Stone did it. Mm. But if Stone did not do this, yeah. then there is a murderer walking around right now because mm. of a predetermined narrative made by the police. Yeah. Yikes. But go listen to the Gone Fishing podcast because it's got way more information than I have. And it would be very good to hear it straight from Gail Manny and get her side of the story. Yeah. They don't interview Stone because they could not get um, approval from the prison to do so. Oh, that in itself is a bit, yeah. So they requested to um, be able to interview Stone, but... Yeah, but they got declined. I don't know if they got declined, they didn't hear anything back, or they got declined, or something like that. Yeah. So instead they interviewed his father who said that and that's just... Who said what, sorry? That he didn't do it. That they flocked. Oh, yeah. Which is just very cringeworthy. <laughs> wow. That, that's interesting. Well, not interesting. Pretty sad if it has been pinned. Yeah, if it has been pinned. If it spent... hasn't, then tough shit. Yeah. Sorry, but... <laughs> she spent. If it has, she spent 15 years in prison. Stone spent over 15 years in prison. And, I mean, prison would have taken a toll on her, even though she does have a psychology degree now. Yeah, but still, 15 years is a long time. Yeah. But anyway, that was our podcast. Yeah, much to think about. (laughs) It's like that Billy Ray Cyrus meme, (laughs) much to think about. I've never seen that meme, so you're oh. going to have to Google that for me. I will. But <laughs> Should we put that on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, Chris, put it on Instagram. Not much to think about. <laughs> but check out our socials. Sign up for a $3 a month Patreon if you want to give us a suggestion. Or Anything. even $5. Oh, yeah. And then we've got a, I think we've got a $10 option and a $20 option as well. Yeah. That's a month. But have a look. Have a squiz, it's not going to hurt to just have a look. Yeah. And, yeah. Thank you for listening. I am Ayla. I'm Andy. And this was Sinister Dynasty. Dynasty.